Hello guys, welcome to my first uh, build video. I decided to try something that's been a controversial topic on many of the forums and uh, Facebook groups. I wanted to try an i3 Skylake build uh, and see if I could play all games maxed out. Uh, this build right here was $940. Uh, the monitor was $300 at Micro Center. This right here is mainly Craigslist and uh, a couple parts from Micro Center. Uh, mainly a used build. But for under $1,000, I was able to fit a 980 Ti and 16 gigs of DDR4 into the budget. So I'm going to be showing how this thing can perform. I'm going to be testing what I've been told is very CPU heavy games. We've got uh, GTA V, uh, Arma 3, um, Rise of the Tomb Raider, the new one that came out, um, The Witcher 3, and uh, we're going to see how an i3 Skylake can perform in these games. Now, this one is overclocked. I wanted to try the i3 overclocking done on the Skylakes and I was able to get 4.6 gigahertz stable. So this thing's at 4.6 gigahertz on 1.46 volts on the V-Core. Uh, it's a little higher than most people want to run, but it's an i3, if it burns, it burns. So, uh, let's get to it. All right, you see, here's GTA. I'm gonna go show the settings. And as you can see, all the settings are maxed out. I will go through the graphics here. Ah, I left FXAA off because I'm running eight times MSAA. There's not a big, there's no real gain in picture quality running two versions of anti-aliasing, and FXAA is very hard on a CPU. So since we're rocking an i3. I figured we would go with MSAA and put the load on the 980 Ti, give the i3 a chance. Now when we get out into the world here, with everything maxed out, including the extended settings, notice that in town we're getting 50 to 60 average, sometimes dropping down into the 40s. I'll drive around here for a little bit and kind of let, let y'all watch the numbers. Now notice that even with the CPU pegging 100%, I am not actually dropping frames. And the GPU usage doesn't really drop that far. So some say if I'm not pegging 100% usage on the GPU, then that right there is called bottlenecking. Well, if me running at this frame rate with an i3 with every setting maxed out is bottlenecking the GPU, I'm happy with it. It's working very, very well in my opinion. Much better than I thought I would have got out of this i3. Now, I did overclock the GPU as well, as you can see, uh, 14, 12 megahertz and a little bit on the, the memory. Um, I overclock everything, so all my tests will usually be overclocked because you want the most out of your equipment, so you might as well overclock. Now, heading out to the grass, that's where the ultra grass is going to come into play. And I want you to notice something on on the uh, percentages of usage here now now notice the frame rate starts dropping we're in the 30s easy and we're gonna drop probably into the 20s here but look at the CPU usage it drops notice the GPU usage is staying high so it looks like CPU usage is directly tied to the frame rate when the frame rate goes down the CPU usage goes down all this footage was recorded with Shadow Play on the i3 computer, which uh, impressed me also. I've never actually used Shadow Play. I didn't notice my frame rate dropping with Shadow Play, which really impressed me. I expected to have some frame rate dropping, especially with the CPU pegging 100% here and there, but I didn't notice any. Now you can see, again, going into the grass, ultra grass, even at night, not that it should matter that much, but we're dropping into the 20s now, we're starting to get down into the 20s. And that's just the ultra grass, you can see CPU usage is dropping. Also notice 5 gigs of VRAM usage on 1080p. Granted it's an ultra wide, but 1080p we're using 5 gigs of VRAM. As you see, we're getting out into the country again and our frames are dropping. Now a lot of people will consider 30 unplayable or unacceptable. 
even though not that long ago everyone was on Xbox 360 with 30 FPS and perfectly happy with it. But to appease them, let's figure out what we would have to do to keep a higher frame rate. Now I go in and the only thing I turn down is the ultra grass and I turn it to very high. So now we go watch the very high video, you'll see that we stay in the 40s every now and then maybe dipping into the 30s, which makes the game a lot closer to the what we consider playable frame rate of 60 FPS. Let's go to Witcher 3. I was told on Witcher 3 I would struggle. Now, let's go through the settings in Witcher 3. Post-processing. The only thing I keep off is motion blur. I am not a fan of motion blur. I think it looks terrible. I could probably turn up the sharpening, but I think it ruins the image a little bit to me. Uh, got hair works on. All the qualities on ultra. And let's see what we get. So it looks like 60 FPS average. Uh, CPU usage occasionally getting pretty close to 100. Uh, sometimes hitting a hundred, but still not dropping frames really, staying above the 60 mark, even while we're hitting 100% CPU usage, which is great to me. Which again imp impressed me. I expected worse results. I expected to be able to play on this i3. I did not expect to be able to max it out and maintain 60 FPS in this game. Uh, game is very beautiful and detailed. They did a great job uh, with this. I'm not a super fan of Hairworks because it looks kind of glitchy sometimes. Uh, I'm not talking about like a hardware problem or the coding kind of problem. Uh, going through his, going through his uniform or when something brushes across it, it has some funny reactions sometimes. But it is a neat feature. Let's go to Armor 3. This is another game I was told I would not be able to play on i3. They recommended I have an i7 for I, uh, Armor 3, which I thought was kind of silly. The game's engine is kind of poorly optimized, so I could see it needing a lot of CPU, but I don't think it needs multi-threads. It looks more like it needs better single threads, which the 4.6 GHz i3 seemed to do very, very good. Let's go through the settings here. I have everything on ultra, highest settings that I could find. Show display. We'll check anti scene. Security, you see everything's pretty much turned on, maxed out. Let's go play. Now, I don't play this game very good. I haven't played in over a year, so I'm still trying to figure out the controls again, so you'll notice me aiming down the sight for extended periods of time, forgetting which button to hit to zoom out and stuff, but for showing the game run, it shouldn't matter too much. And I'm just trying to show the game run, so I'm not trying to play hardcore. Um, you're going to notice I'm running around in the open, not really paying attention. Uh, just just trying to show show how this machine runs in this game next let's do Call of Duty Black Ops 3 this game is very poorly optimized in my opinion uh, I expected them to work on this a little more. I mean, it plays perfectly on consoles, but here we come to PC, and some of these maps, man, are pulling five gigabytes of VRAM, which is just intense for for Call of Duty. Uh, the amount of VRAM needed is is over the top. I tried playing this on a 580 PC. I had two 580s in it, and it was near unplayable. I had to play on the lowest settings, and it just looked terrible. So they could have done a lot better texture optimization in this game in my opinion now the game is still very fun I very, I very much enjoyed it I put quite a few hours in it I just wish I would, would have had more optimization so people that don't want to spend as much in a PC that I do I'd have a 
chance of having more people to play against because right now the lobbies are kind of thin especially if you want to play something like search and destroy and again we'll look at the CPU usage 30 40 rarely hitting 50 percent uh, now I made a mistake I didn't realize that I had a form of v-sync turned on we're averaging about a hundred to 120 FPS which is awesome for an i3 Both these games I lost, uh, both these games I was top on team, and both these games I was positive with about a 1.65 KD ratio. Yeah, we need more players, and I need better players. <laughs> Let's go on to our next game, Rise of the Tomb Raider. I was told this one was going to be pretty tough. Now, I wasn't going to sit and play this whole game through to get a... Um, to get a benchmark so I test the begin I test benchmark here so this is with the benchmark running the benchmark running will go through the mountain scene it'll go through the temple scenes and it'll go through the jungle scenes which are all different areas that are taxing in the game so we'll be able to tell how this i3 does keep an eye on CPU percentage and GPU percentage Notice the GPU is working at its near peak of almost 100%, which tells me that the i3 is not holding back this GPU in this game and any of the other games that I've played so far. Also averaging above 60 FPS, again with all settings maxed out. Note the RAM usage, the VRAM usage is insane, and we're going over 6 at points. But it's expected with how beautiful the scenery and stuff is in this game. It is absolutely beautiful, they did a great job of making it pretty to look at while playing it. So our averages were 87, 61, and 61. That tells me that this i3 is playing this game just fine. Now Battlefield 4. I didn't see this as being CPU intensive at all. And I was told by several people on the PC page that this would be a CPU intensive game. Uh, this game is so optimized. It came out on the last gen consoles. Uh, it's It ran perfectly fine. But notice the CPU usage is pegging close to 100, but again, that's because we've got a high frame rate. We're pushing upwards sometimes of 160 FPS. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because obviously with this kind of frame rate, there's not any bottlenecking going on. Let's try out Ark Survival. Now this game, again, pretty poorly optimized. It is an alpha build, I believe, still. I'd have to double check that. But it's the engine is just not very optimized yet. It's got quite a ways to go. But let's see what we get in ARC with the i3-6300. And we go back to how poorly optimized this game currently is. You'll notice that we're pegging the GPU at 97% all the way up to 100 in some cases and our CPU is just not struggling at all. Uh, but we're only measuring 30 FPS and that's with a 980 Ti and that's with the 980 Ti working its hardest and the CPU just kinda cruising through um, at about 70%. Oh, I think the peak I saw was 80% when it was in a pretty busy area. Uh, the game... I don't know. I, I need to spend some time playing this game. I'm not super impressed yet. I know it's kind of a, a niche group of people that really, really are hardcore at this game. So it makes joining kind of, kind of hard to get into until you've kind of figured out what you got going on. Uh, spent a lot of time dying, walking the coast, dinosaurs killing me. 
I think if I lowered some settings, the CPU usage would go up. So I decided I'm going to try and lowering it, leaving everything on ultra, but I just want to try to get the frame rate higher. So I lower it down to 720p, which looks terrible. Absolutely terrible. But if you look now, CPU usage is actually climbing up into the 90s and dropping, but we're keeping a 60 FPS play. Now doing this, you'll notice the CPU usage went up, but so did the frame rate. We're averaging above 50 every now and then dropping into the high 40s, uh, especially in the tree area. The trees seem to be very, very taxing on uh, the frame rate. Crisis 3. This is the one that everyone always says is hard to run. I've never played it. I need to play it more. Um, and I, since I haven't played it, I'm going to be starting at the beginning, and I don't have a lot of time right now to play this game, so we're going to be pretty much going off the beginning scenes, which I know are not the most taxing on the hardware, but we're going to start with that and see what we get. So, so from the beginning, where you start, immediately noticed that I was over 60 FPS, and the CPU usage was only 80-ish percent at the peaks and dropping into the 60s. Notice the GPU again is slowing our frame rate down. The GPU is being maxed out, so our frame rate is going down, which is letting our CPU relax a little bit. So this game, so far at the beginning, has played very well. I haven't really noticed dropping into the 40s. I've only noticed dropping into the 50s, and sometimes jumping up to the high 80s, uh, low 90s, depending on the scene and what's in the scene. I do love the way this game looks, especially for being a little bit older game. They did a great job of making this game look good. I need to spend more time on it. I plan to. Um, probably going to have to get Crisis 1 and Crisis 2 just so I can kind of follow the story. Uh, so far, from what I can tell, this is a very beautiful game and it's running very beautifully on this PC. I do want to get a capture card so I don't have to use shadow play. Uh, I do want to get a better camera. This is a Nikon Cool Pix. It's getting kind of old and it's not really meant for what I'm doing with it. And I'd like to get a good microphone, uh, even if it's just uh, one of the snowball mics, I believe is what they call it. I need to look into it. But for now, this is what I got. Um, hopefully it worked out okay. Uh, and the video is somewhat enjoyable, especially my findings. I find my findings fun. Uh, but y'all have a, a, a good night, day, whatever it is for y'all. And we'll see you on the Core 2 Duo motherboard test. I don't know what I'm going to call that. I guess. I'm just doing motherboard versus carpet. But there's other things it's going to be going against. Motherboard versus carpet. Uh, thanks for watching. And catch y'all later.